Um, I uh, began to investigate the impact of commercial antennas that were being placed on a tower near me because my grandchildren and my daughter was pregnant at the time with twins. When the, and they, these towers were in proximity to her. This was just after the WHO had issued their 2B warning, and I quickly found out that there's no proof that this exposure to wireless radiation is safe, and there's much proof that it isn't. Sorry, I'll need help to change the slides. I don't have a clicker. Thank you. Um, I'm urging, so back one. Thank you. I'm urging a two-prong approach. First, that uh, you today have an opportunity to lower radiation standards, the, the emission standards, consistent with published science that is known today. And secondly, that you have an opportunity to urge the, the Health Canada to better inform Canadians on so-called voluntary exposures. There I go. I'm going to skip this slide because we've covered international standards. And you now know that we uh, um, our, ten, our standard of 10 million microwatts per meter squared is far higher than other what we consider leading edge countries. And in fact, it's, it's multiple times higher on the, on the bioinitiative recommended levels. So what has changed since the WA's class 2B classification? What's changed in the world? What's the outcome for people and families around the world? we are beginning to see movement around the world to create a better environment. Today, many scientists are in fact calling for a 2A classification, in, including Dr. Miller, uh, who was uh, from the Della Lama School of Public Health, University of Toronto, and who has requested a 2A classification as part of the ICNRP panel that first formulated the 2A, or sorry, the 2B. Interestingly enough, I want to bring your attention to one example this week. Belgium passed a legislation law. As of October 22nd of this year, Belgium has mandated SAR values be posted at the point of sale of, of cell phones and also prohibited marketing cell phones to children. In 2011, IARC declared a possible carcinogen, and this is because, as you can see, there is a much larger area of absorption in a five-year-old child, which is the image on the left, from that of an adult. Scientists are saying studies find that the cell phone radiation damages DNA and other effects that you have heard today. This risk rises with a lifetime of exposure. Some studies have found that after a decade of heavy cell phone use, brain tumor risks double in adults and quadruple in those who started to use cell phones as teenagers. You might ask, what would the measure of public change? Would it anything? Will behaviors change? Well, I ask you to consider that just like the energy label now used when you shop for household appliances, consumers can take this into consideration. They will have the SAR value to make a choice between two devices that are equivalent on other features. Another issue that you would please be, we would be pleased if you would consider is the issue of proximity. Normal cell phones is, is uh, to put the phone right to your head, as you well know. Often it's stored in a pocket or a bra. This proximity is contrary to all cell phone manual warnings. Warnings buried in the fine print, as you've heard today. This chart shows the SAR, the radiation drop off from putting a phone neck body to a disc five millimeters. The iPhone 4 is in the blue line, the top line. The BlackBerry 9700 is red. Putting some phones directly against the head can well result in exposures in excess of the current SC6 code limits. The public needs to understand safety guidelines must be changed, and we need to reflect the common usage of putting cell phones right to. More than a dozen countries have restricted since the, the WHO 2011 warning 
More than a dozen countries have restricted the use of cell phones by children. They advise precautions and they display SAR values. India passed similar legislation, France, uh, Israel, Finland, Russia. We can cite the precedents for you. We urge you to urge Canada to start making this knowledge public. As you've also heard today, the Canadian wireless technology association figures show exponential usage growth since the current SC level, set, level was set in the 1980s. Then we had 9,700 subscribers, sorry, 94,000 subscribers. Today, almost 28 million. 30 years ago, people didn't in the service of knowledge. Your work has never been more important than on this issue, this topic, before you today. With all due respect, dear panel, without knowing the actual scope of your review, which I thank you very much for sharing more interest or more knowledge with us today, I nevertheless request that you reject a rote review and undertake a comprehensive review that will result in clear direction to use best possible practice to protect the health of Canadians and to minimize exposure, particularly the most vulnerable, such as children, the unborn, and psychosensitive people. Thank you. Thank you. This is Mr. Mark McKenzie. He's just going to conclude my remarks. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Wendy. Um, uh, my name is Mark McKenzie, as president of the Organic Landscape Alliance. From the late 1990s to the mid 2000s, I was heavily involved in discussions relating to the safety of lawn chemicals, a lot of similarities here, and how they impact human health. I was involved in a number of interactions with Health Canada and participated in discussions hosted by various municipalities in Ontario on the issue. For example, there's been much discussion lately about the effect of a group of pesticides known as neon icotinol. and whether or not these colonies that have been lost will come back. And uh, the, uh, the ev evidence is piling up that indeed may be a double whammy for these bees because they may be seriously affected by microwave technology. That's certainly our topic of a uh, Back to the lawns, having run an organic <coughs> lawn care business, I knew that there were completely organic ways to take care of lawns and offered guarantees uh, as such. And there are solutions uh, to access the internet without uh, compromising human health. Science is basically just, uh, just, uh, defined as observation, of course. Observation of what has happened and what is currently happening. Public policy, on the, on the other hand, is meant strictly for the future. Laws and regulations are not meant, meant to change what has happened but, or change what will happen. So many times during the pesticide debate, I saw these two paradigms in, in, inappropriately meshed, and I'm most definitely seeing the same type of problem in these discussions around safety code six, or as I prefer to call it, safety code six minutes. There will be a lot of ac economic activity generated from technology such as Wi-Fi. The public will continue to have a voracious appetite for more and more innovative ways to use technology in a wireless fashion. We know from scientific observation and through the use of measuring instruments, because our own senses don't pick this up, except if you're electrosensitive, of course, that humans are now increasingly exposed to levels of microwave radiations that we've never seen before. Yes, these frequencies happen naturally, but not to the extent that we're exposing ourselves to nowhere near. We are all involved in a massive experiment, the full effects of which we will be able to 
measure scientifically in addition to what is already happening is overwhelming and this is being submitted to you throughout these proceedings. Since there is no way we can observe the future effects of anything we are exposed to until we have the measurements of how humans will be affected, we have to rely on public policy that makes sense in order to protect the population. Health Canada has an obligation to those that are sensitive and to the general who is not yet aware of, of all the effects um, of repeated exposure to EMF. Uh, they have an obligation to seriously change the standards of safety code six. With each delay, it will be increasingly more difficult to divorce ourselves from harmful infrastructure. Completely safe infrastructure is more than possible. Those that promote the massive increase of wireless technologies, both from those that profit from it and those that use it, will continue to say that there's no scientific proof that this explosion of energy is causing any harm. Even though it now surrounds us almost constantly beside our beds, in our homes, schools, workplace, vehicles, and perhaps even in our parks. There is seemingly no end to where this will all go since safety code six minutes, only thing that happens in a six minute time frame. Health Canada considers that self satisfactory. It reminds me of the saying with friends like that who needs enemies. We have technology that has proven to be safe and effective um, and secure to access the internet. A tad less convenient perhaps than wireless, but we can all have full internet access in enough places in our world with wires, particularly in our homes, workplaces, and especially in our schools. Each wired connection takes away the, the, from the need for more and more hours, emitting more and more radiation beside where we work, live, and play. We have to put a mor moratorium on further exposure to EMR and to begin the process of reduction of radiation in the environment in our buildings uh, with higher standards for protection of the population. We can concentrate on wiring buildings for internet access, starting with public buildings, schools, and set better standards for the workplace that will actually protect all from unnecessary. We can signal to industry that they need to produce wireless products that are much safer, one million times lower radiation, modulated signals, etc. Industry can do this and will do this with the appropriate regulatory incentive. We can implement the precautionary principle now, and we, the public, are relying on the Royal Society to give this advice to Health Canada. Thank you very much.